our election is fast coming. I think this week, this Saturday. And um, words. I know this is a sensitive moment in my country, Nigeria. I know the moments are very sensitive. And sometimes, because of the sensitivity of this moment, God spoke to me something very sensitive. Please, wherever you are hearing me, I don't want you to misinterpret God's word for my country. First of all, I want to start by appreciating the youth of Nigeria for their gallant consciousness about the next election, which is in 2023. Nigeria is a project in the hands of God. And for the first time, the youth in my country wake up from their slumber. They are sensitive, matured, calculative, getting their voters card. May God strengthen you all. The Christian body, churches, pastors are also conscious and they are all praying. Prophets are prophesying. So many school of thought I want to appreciate everybody for what you are doing for this great country. I want to start by saying to you, early this year, if you remember, January 1st, 2022, God spoke to me that 2023 is a year of mystery and that I see light in darkness and darkness in light. And that the year is a year of mystery. I still stand on that position of what God said to me. That we need to be very careful. Especially prophets and people that are prophesying. We should be very, very careful because it's a mysterious year. If it be here, if you ask me, I only see in part. And I want to say my part of what God has shown me. I just don't know some of you will be very interested to say, is he trying to prophesy about, is he calling the name of the next president of the country? No. That's not where I'm going to. I'm coming from a perspective where God showed me. This part is what we should pray about. The youth, the Christians, the Muslims of Nigeria. Please, don't take my words out of context. Don't add or subtract from what God is saying. I will speak in parable because I am afraid to say what I saw. So I will put them like this. Let us pray for our current leaders to finish well what they have started. Like I say, I will speak in parables. Let us pray for the forthcoming election to go smoothly without any roadblock and manipulation. What I mean by the forthcoming election is the 2023 election. Please underline this word to go smoothly without roadblocks and manipulation. Let us pray against a conspiracy theory that I don't want to explain. I'll leave it that. It is pregnant with a lot of meaning. I want to re-emphasize this. Why others are busy talking about who will become the president? This is important once more. Let us pray for the forthcoming election to go smoothly without any roadblock and manipulation. Let us pray, in quote, against any conspiracy theory. I don't want to explain. 
This is pregnant with a lot of meaning. Let us pray that the enemies of Nigeria should not throw Nigeria into total darkness before the election and after the election. Take note of my words. They are serious. Telling you who will be the next president is not as important as this vision. Let us pray that the enemies of Nigeria should not throw Nigeria into total darkness before the election and after the election so that history should not repeat itself in an alarming form. So that history should not repeat itself in an alarming form. Take note of everything I have said. When God reviewed, he reviewed to redeem. Our prayer should be more that there should be no systemic failure. God bless you. So are you ready? So stand up. Are you with your water now? Hallelujah. I, I don't think if you if you are following my prophetic track over Nigeria, I don't think you should be confused. There are things I will never say. They're just in my stomach. And our father portrays this point last week. I said, we have overcome one part of it. Is the second part. And I'm not going to say that more than that. Is prayer working? Prayer is already working. If prayer is not working, you and I will not be sitting here. Prayer is already working. And I know what you are going to ask me. Is I want to, I still stand by my prophecy. But I'm adding something to it. And I will speak to you in parable. We are in a boisterous ocean, big sea. And the ship is sailing. The wind will blow us here, will blow us here to look like. We are about to sink, but we will not sink. After some time, there will be stillness, there will be calmness, and the ship will sail. Don't forget what I said last week. I said, the outcome of all these things is that if you are angry, don't instigate people into violence. Don't make any statement that will provoke Nigeria to Nigerians to pick up arms. If you want to readdress your grievance, go through the legitimate process, which is the law court. Don't forget this. I know what you ask me. Prophet, what do you see coming ahead? I said this year is light in darkness and darkness in light. Now hear me now. What we are experiencing now is light in darkness. But very soon, light will swallow darkness. Don't forget my... Please... The prophecy are there on the internet. I'm not just talking. I'm not talking because I saw anything happening. This prophecy, I gave it in South Africa, June. Then it's there. You can go and check it. Early 2021, I gave you. January 2021 to 2022. I said 2023 is going to be a year of mystery. And I said all the political gurus will fail in their calculation. Everybody will be afraid. It is a game that go and 
sound check. The prophecy is there. Are you ready? As those who think they are political guru, they will not be able to forecast. There will be fear. That is where you know. Anybody who emerge or whatever happened, you know God and is in Nigeria. Now, you don't have any right to call anybody evil or bad. God sees the intention and sees the future from the beginning. Pastors, be very careful of how you talk. You are not God. You only have your own opinion side. That's why I said, this is the side God has shown me. So what we are experiencing is light in darkness. What do you mean by light in darkness? It simply means that it looks like darkness is about to swallow light. But very soon the music will change. Darkness now will enter light. Light will supersede darkness. That's all. That's all. You don't need to be confused. Prophet, are you positive about Nigeria? Yes. Is it bright? Yes. Is it going to be tough? Yes. But will light swallow darkness? Yes. Will we have peace? Yes. Will it get better? Yes. Don't have fear. For, please, go to the internet. Check all my prophecies. I think the media group will have to do all this so that we can put it for you to see. You follow it. You just stop saying. When I hear uh, people say, oh, all the prophets in Nigeria, they don't know what is about. We know what is about to happen. Me, especially me, I have prayed about this. And I'm not confused. I'm not just permitted to talk. That's to talk more than this junction. Because it's a trying moment. Emotions are mixed. But saying that we, we don't, how will you say we don't? We, we have seen it. I've seen it like a television. It has played out for me. So I'm not confused. I'll give you another parable now. And that's where I'm going to stop. And this is very important. And don't forget. You know, thank you, Lord. When I saw the ship in the sea, and the wind was blowing the ship left and right. The sailor was trying to drive the ship to another direction. But the steering just automatically came out of the sailor's hand. And it was under the control that the sailor couldn't hold the steering. Then, the, then I saw a mighty hand that is invisible to the sailor sailing the ship. And I saw that it moves the ship against the direction of the captain. Don't forget this word. That's all. If you want to abuse me, abuse me. If you want to, me, I've told you. <laughs> I will speak to you in parable. Now today I've interpreted the meaning of light in darkness and darkness in light. You know I've been saying it but I've refused to tell you. The next time I will interpret the remaining one. Give Jesus a clamp of it. You see. As a prophet, when I was growing up as a young prophet, I was putting my emotions in the prophetic. One day God called me. He said, I don't have the kind of emotions you have. I'm God all by myself. I've seen the future beyond what you see. I do the things I do the way I do it because I know the ending from the beginning. You know the ending from where you are standing. But hear me, I am all-knowing God. Today it might not be clearer to you, but the future will make you know why I do the things I do. 
There are certain things God has spoken to me. By and large, as I climbed the prophetic ladder. And I tried to question God. And he said to me, son, keep quiet. The future will answer this question. Please, young prophets, don't carry your emotions into God's work. The way God operates, they are very deep. They are very, very deep. Very deep. How will Jacob want to bless his children and he cross his hand? Why will he cross his hand? Why will he take the blessing of the first son and give to the last born? And the blessing of the last born and give to the first son? It's something else. How can two children be in the womb? And God spoke to the mother. Jacob I love, Esau I hate. How can God hate one and love one? And how can God take the blessing of the firstborn and give to the lastborn? This God there, me, sometimes, with due respect, Baba God, sometimes, I don't know why you do the things you do. I'm among the few prophets of God. You remember a king? He was looking for prophets. All the prophets were prophesying this way. And the king said, they mentioned a particular prophet. And the king said, what? He said, this one, if he comes, he's not going to prophesy what I want. His own is always, if 10, if 100 are going this direction, this one is going this direction. And truly, who know the prophet? Bible student. Me? Micaiah. Prophet Micaiah. And truly, when he appeared before the king, <laughs> what he said was opposite all the other prophets. The king said, well, didn't I say it? It don't come to pass. <laughs> now so he be. Now so he be. Now so he be. <laughs> I might be standing alone, no? <laughs> but I'm positive Nigeria is getting better. I'm speaking from the eye of faith. I know it's tough. I know it's tough. <laughs> some of you, you are not even smiling. Even in this service, the way some of you are smiling. <laughs> I know he's, I know he's, he's blessed. The way some of you are even looking. <laughs> Hallelujah. But can we leave our government aside? And talk about we Nigerians. Those of you operating POS. I, can you tell me why you should? How much are they collecting? 400 for one. Eh? 1,000 for 10. 4,000 for 10,000. 400 for 1,000. Now, please, those of you operating POS. I'm asking you, if you became, if you become president of this country, what is going to happen to us? If you can collect 400 for 1,000, and you collect 4,000 for 10,000, and you collect 8,000 for 20,000, ah! and you are not yet a minister, you are not yet a local government chairman, you are not yet a counselor, you are not yet a president. The problem of Nigerians are Nigerians. Let's leave government aside now. Is it government that is making life hard now in this world? Is it not we being mean and being wicked to one another? How come on? Come on, how, the, how will you collect 4,000 Naira for 10,000? Okay, I know again, another corruption. Where did you get that money from? How much did the people that give you charge you? Is this not getting better? Yeah. Now your Naira is more valuable than dollar. People are no longer chasing dollar. They are looking for Nera. 
If somebody has prophesied to you that in this year you will look for Nera and forget dollar, you will not believe. But look at you now. Give Jesus a clamp offering.